Statistics in Schools, or SIS, is a free educational program created by the U.S. Census Bureau. We offer over 200 student-friendly resources and activities that use census data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate the SIS website and get to our resources at census.gov forward slash schools. When you come to our homepage, you'll notice we've placed tabs up top to help you quickly navigate to all our materials. Just underneath, you'll see an orange banner that takes you to the at-home and distance learning materials. Back on the home page, as you continue to scroll down, you'll see a calendar graphic and Explore Here button. Selecting either will direct you to our monthly highlights page. Monthly Highlights is a new page that we created to conveniently provide a one-stop shop for all our resources related to the month's events. For this example, in the month of May, there are resources for learning about apportionment, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Mother's Day, National Small Business Week, and a few other celebrated national days. Back again on the home page, scroll down further for other convenient quick links that take you to our classroom activities for subjects such as math, English, history, geography, and sociology, five-minute challenge warm-up activities, and more. Our homepage also provides a link to information about becoming an SIS teacher, ambassador, or partner, and quick access to our most popular data tool, State Facts for Students. You can also subscribe to receive our monthly newsletter, explore videos, and visit the Statistics in Schools Pinterest page. Business owners need reliable data about their potential customers, competition, and market to make data-driven decisions. In this data gem, we will show you how you can use Census Business Builder to visualize and analyze the most current demographic and business data in your market or area of interest. Hi, I'm Nadal Gibran with the Economic Directorate. To start, you can find the Census Business Builder several ways. The easiest is to go to cbb.census.gov. Also, you can go to the data tools from the Census Bureau homepage. Lastly, you can use your preferred search engine to find CBB. You can either type in a particular geography or select the Find My Location icon to the left of the search box to find your location. To do this, you will have to have location services turned on in order for it to work. First, let's select the geography by typing on the search box. We recommend you start at the county level to view the most data. In this case, we are typing Fairfax County, Virginia into the search box. Once you've selected your geography, the dashboard will populate with the default data variables. This includes total population, median household income, percent high school degree or higher, all employer establishments, and home ownership rate. You can also customize your dashboard to display the information that is relevant to your business need. Say you'd like to find the best place to open an upscale bar or lounge, and you would like to know about your potential customer base. Then you might want to focus on variables such as total population over 21 years and median household income. You might also want to know about other businesses like yours. In that case, you can look at variables such as total number of employers and non-employers, average payroll per employee, and population per employer for bars and cocktail lounges. There are a few ways to do this. You can select your first map variable from the top banner or within the dashboard. In this case, let's add percent 21 years and over as our first variable. Since we are looking for a demographic variable, we want to make sure that our primary category is set to consumers residents and our secondary category is set to demographic characteristics. From here, select percent 21 years and over and you'll notice the dashboard is automatically updated. Click anywhere outside of the menu to close it. You can add a second variable as well. Again, you can do this by clicking on the top banner or by selecting within the dashboard. In this case, let's target median household income. Look for median household income under the socioeconomics characteristics subcategory and make the selection. Let's click on the Chevron to collapse the dashboard and see our updated map better. 
you now have an informative visualization that shows you the concentration of both of these variables on the map. Use the legend to guide you here. The first map variable is located in the first section of the legend, percent 21 years and over. Scroll down to see the second map variable, median household income. The first map variable is displayed as colors and the second map variable will always be displayed as circles. The size and color of the circle represents the number. Census Business Builder allows you to create reports based on the geographies and industries you've selected. These reports will provide you with all of the variables available in the Census Business Builder, not just those on the dashboard, including information about similar businesses in your industry, which could help guide your business decisions. So first, let's settle on a geography for our business. Looking at the map, Arlington County, Virginia seems like a strong candidate because we see it has a high percent of population over 21 with a higher income level. Clicking on Arlington County, we can open the dashboard to see the statistics. Once we select this geography, we want to create an industry profile so that we can better understand local economic conditions for this industry. There are a few ways to select your industry. At the top left, you will see the all sectors option. You can select an industry by typing it in the search for industries bar. You can search by the industry name or by the North American Industrial Classification System code or NAICS. You can also click on the Add Industry button. This brings you to a pre-selected list of industries. Select Food Services and then select Bars from the options available. If you would like to learn more about the NAICS code, click on the arrow next to the industry. Select Create Report from the dashboard and Census Business Builder will generate a downloadable customizable and shareable report in a separate tab. Scroll down to the business summary section. In this section, you can evaluate economic data for similar businesses in your geography. Such data includes number of employer establishments, average payroll per employee, average revenue per employer, average revenue per employee, firm job gains and losses, etc. This will give you a good picture of the economic conditions that await you if you decide to open a business in this location. And there you have it. Within a few minutes, we were able to visualize and identify potential geographies that might make sense for opening an upscale bar. Census Business Builder also offers features that allow you to analyze a cluster of industries together or businesses within a region. This tool is also now optimized for viewing on mobile devices. For more videos like this, you can visit census.gov forward slash academy. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a chance to learn with us. So my community explorer, we hope are taking some of the best features from on the map emergency management and from census business builder and from community resilience estimates and the American Community Survey and putting them in one um, easy to use tool. So there's a little note that you're greeted with to show you that there's two basic ways that you're gonna explore data. By panning and zooming in on the map, going down to the county level or the census track level, or you can uh, explore a more detailed set of data by actually picking a state and picking a particular county from a drop down menu, which is over here, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to close this little welcoming message out and we'll see a we'll see the country. And right now the map is displaying community resilience estimates. If we scroll in a little bit. These darker areas here and here, um, those are areas that people have three or more risk factors. So they're at high risk to an adverse outcome from any particular event. So we're going to scroll in and we're going to go over to Los Angeles here. And if we were to go right now and click on Los Angeles County, we're going to get a pop up. And this pop up is giving us some data from the American Community Survey on Los Angeles County. We're seeing that 14.9% had an income level in the past uh, 12 months below the poverty level. We can look at the percentage that have a broadband subscription. We can look at um, the number of people with a high school graduate degree or higher. 
We can look at the percentage of people who speak English less than very well. We can look at the number of people over the age of 65, and we get a Gini index, which is a measure of income inequality. So the closer to zero you are, the closer you are to total income equality, meaning an equal distribution of income across the population. And the higher you get to one, where one means perfect inequality, where you don't have a, a relatively even distribution of income across your population. And if we continue to scroll down, you'll see some charts and the labeling here. So we see limited English spoken at home. So each of these charts, if you hover over it, it's gonna give you um, some data here, these little, um, what we call uh, tool tips, which tells you what, you what you're looking at. And then there are other ones here as well. This one is dealing with race and ethnicity as a percent of the population. And then if we click on this next one, we start to look at the community resilience estimates, which I had mentioned before. So you can see that there's 21% of the residents in Los Angeles County <clears throat> have three or more risk factors. You can see here um, the number of people. And here we see 52% have one to two risk factors. And we have uh, uh, approximately 25% that don't have any risk factors. And you're probably wondering, what are the risk factors? Well, the risk factors would be things like um, uh, elderly, which we're calling 65 or over. English is not the first language or not spoken well at home. Um, maybe you've been in poverty in the last 12 months. So there's things that we know um, help uh, make people more likely to have an adverse outcome. And so those are the risk factors, and I'll show you more about those in a minute. We also let you know, for example, if we look at this, we see right here, we have a little sentence here. So we can tell you, because people often want to know what the context is of this percentage of having three or more risk factors. And so we're telling you that this is not statistically different than the national estimate. And so this gives you a little bit of context. It doesn't mean that that's an area that can't be adversely impacted. But if you're wondering how it would compare to the nation as a whole, we kind of let you know that as well. And then you can see some difference from the national estimate based on topic right here. So for example, the Gini index of income inequality is higher than what we have for the difference from the national estimate. So I'm just going to close this out for a second and just show you that if you wanted to go in further, <clears throat> eventually you're going to start to see track numbers appear. And when you get into the right level here, you could pick on a census track. So let me see. Here's one that seems to. So if we click on here, so we're looking at census track 4032 in Los Angeles County. And we start to see that they have 12% um, of their, 51.12% of the residents have three or more risk factors. 27% have one to two risk factors and 21% have zero risk factors. And again, you can go down and look at this by topic to see if it's statistically different than what the national estimate is. And again, you're starting to see some of the risk factors, not only the Gini index, but um, you look in the population in rural areas, the median age of the population, population over 65, non-institutionalized population with a disability, population whose income in the last 12 months is below the poverty level, households with a female householder, no spouse or partner present with children, um, the male householder, same thing, occupied units, so we have a number of different things here that you're able to sort of look at. <clears throat> now, this is just exploring some of the data here. If you were to notice, none of the data over here in this panel has changed. This panel right now is representing the United States as a whole. But if we really wanted to look at a specific, a specific county, and look at some different county economic profiles, social characteristics, race and ethnicity, and a business profile, we can do it from this panel over here. 
where we would select um, California. We'll come over here to this panel and we're going to pick Los Angeles. So we're picking Los Angeles County. And now you know that this is all changed now to reflect to reflect Los Angeles County. And you're also going to see now a county economic profile when we go through these tabs. So now we see the Gini index of 0.5, households below the poverty, household income less than 75,000. We have some interactive charts here. Population without health insurance by age. Total household income under 100,000. And that's the economic profile. I mean, yeah, the econ socioeconomic profile. Here we have some social characteristics. So you can see the number of people with disabilities, 65 and over, without a vehicle, households with broadband, or 84% of the households have broadband. We can see language spoken at home. And we could see language spoken at home by those who speak English less than very well. You can click over here and we can see some county race and ethnicity data. If you were to zoom in on this part of the map, you can still um, use it and it's going to bring up some of the charts that we were looking at or the pie charts that we were looking at before. And then we have some. Also, let me show you if you if you were not that much interested and you just wanted to make this easier to view, you can just expand that over here. And then we have a county business profile coming from uh, three of our economic surveys, including the uh, including county business patterns and non employer statistics. So this is. We have more data and interactive tools for you. Visit census.gov and search for these topics by keyword or scan the QR code for direct links to play Kahoot games with fun and interesting themes. Pull quick facts about your state, county, city, or town. View annual earnings and job industries by degree type in the post-secondary employment outcomes or PSEO Explorer. See how social characteristics of young adults aged 18 to 34 changed from 2019 to 2021. And access Census Bureau data that can be used by policymakers and change makers like you to advance equity. Data is power and it's in your hands.